I have to do it. Hello everyone! My name is Bjork, and today I'm going to show you how to build my practical potion brewing room. Now, this room is packed to the brim with features that will be useful for players who want to do a lot of brewing in their survival worlds. It also uses dangerous blocks for decoration. Now, I spent some time in this tutorial going over block choices and placement decisions, so if you want some tips that'll help you become a better builder, be sure to keep watching. Also. I made this entire tutorial because one person left me a comment suggesting I do tips for interiors, so if there's anything you would like to see, you can leave a comment, and I might get to it 8 months later. So these are the materials that you will need. I will also have this list in the description. This build measures 8 by 9, though you will not need all of the corner space. Okay, you can begin by placing a 7x7 seven seven square using regular deep slate because it looks sturdy and it's a great choice for a workshop where you might have volatile liquids being splashed around. Now, we're going to texture the floor by replacing some of the deep slate against the sides of the other blocks to make the floor look a little bit scuffed and like this room has been in heavy use. Now, take some dark oak and go up four blocks in each of the corners. Now, we're going to add an accent on the bottom here using blue terracotta, and then we are going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Now, place three columns of temporary blocks just like this, and we're doing this because if you place muddy mangrove roots on top of each other, they don't make the pattern we want, we want to place them against the temporary blocks. Now, do the same thing on the other side. Now, we're going to add visual interest by using regular mud blocks to add little stripes just like that. Now, over here, you can add a line here using any kind of filler block because these are not going to be seen. Now, we're going to make the build look a little bit more varied by making this wall out of stripped spruce, and then we're going to add further storage space and more variation using two barrels just like that, and then some random block because that one's not going to get seen, and then another column of barrels right there. Alright. So we are going to start with the left side of the room. So come over to this corner here and we are going to create our renewable source of nether wart with some soul sand, some nether wart, and I feel like sand and dirt should always be contained with solid trapdoors instead of the ones with the holes in them. So we're going to use a dark oak trapdoor there and then we are going to put a spruce trapdoor there and just ignore the completely open side and then a cauldron in here and we are going to fill that with two water bottles which will fill it two-thirds of the way up because I think the cauldrons look so much more interesting when they're not completely full and then we are going to use a tripwire hook here to represent a faucet and then another spruce trapdoor here and a brewing stand on top and now we are going to put a jungle trapdoor here and turn it up just like that and now in this corner here, we have a couple of options. So I like using respawn anchors in my brewing rooms because when you charge them, the top has this really neat like swirly pattern and I think it looks like potions brewing in a cauldron or something. So I think that's just perfect for a brewing room. Now, if you are concerned about setting it off in survival, you can put string on top and then a trap door there. Now, if you are just way too concerned about having a respawn anchor in your survival base, you can just get rid of that and use some scaffolding instead, just like that. I tried putting the respawn anchor back and I blew it up. Okay, now we're gonna add some storage space up here, so put a chest there and there, and then three barrels in the middle. Now take some spruce stairs and put them just like that. Now put some spruce trap doors beneath, and here you can either put a soul lantern for that nice touch of cyan color, or if it's too dark, you can put a regular lantern just like that. 
Now for this section here, we are going to put a beehive right here. Now I love these blocks because the front of them kind of looks like kitchen drawers and the top of it kind of looks like a cutting board. So I think it's appropriate for like a kitchen or like a practical brewing area. Now we are going to put a lever on top and I kind of think this looks like a little like knife block. So of course it's also appropriate for kitchens and brewing stations. And it has an additional practical feature because this hopper here will be locked by this so that any like bottles in this brewing stand won't fall through. Now break these and put a chest here. Now if you kind of have a bunch of random blocks here and it looks hideous just fill it in like that. So um, and then put your double chest there. Now you can put some stairs here. Any kind of stairs will do. I just like the waxed weathered cut stairs, which is such a mouthful. Now you can put a trip wire hook up here again to represent a faucet and a sign here. I like using oak signs. Now grab a jungle trap door and put one of those here. Now I really like the jungle trap doors because the thing on the top here kind of looks like a handle. So it really looks like a dishwasher door or something, which is appropriate considering the fact that you're going to be opening this to access your large chest. And I just realized you can see the dirt there, so I'm just going to fill that in with some more stripped spruce. And over here, we are going to put two pieces of soul sand and then some nether wart on top and then dark oak trap doors there's as well for additional sources of nether wart. And last of all, take your water bucket and fill in your sink just like that. Okay, now this wall needs something up here to help balance it. So we're going to take some bookshelves and we're going to put two of them there. And then we're going to put a spruce slab right there and then two spruce trap doors just so it looks like there's something actually supporting those bookshelves. Now we're going to take an oak trap door and we're going to put it there just like that. Now this whole section kind of represents like... Now this whole section kind of has like a practical use because this is where you could store all of your books on brewing and whatnot. And if you're in 1.20 and beyond, you can use the bookshelves that like actually store books in them. But for now, we're just gonna use the regular bookshelves. Now take a pot and put it there and then put some warped roots or any kind of like cooler colored plant in there just to balance the amount of red that we have over here. And now for the final wall. So take some chests and put lines of double chests just like that. Now put a line of barrels just like that. And then spruce slabs there and there just like that. And then put a brewing stand here and here. And then a flower pot with a crimson fungus in it just there. And then a lantern right up there. Now, if you like, you can put either of the two types of item frames down the line of chests just like that, and then put some potions in them to signify what is inside. Or you can be like me, and you can just pick like a cute looking gradient and then put completely different stuff inside the chests. Final note, I think this room does look a little bit better when there is a purple carpet in the middle just like this and you can texture it with carpet and you can even hide like an ender chest beneath it so you get this neat little particle effect. The only reason I didn't put any kind of rug in here is because it's supposed to be like a practical room with like weird liquids being splashed about so it doesn't really make sense for there to be a rug there but it does look better with the rug inside. And I almost forgot, take a crafting table and put it here. Now this kind of looks like a floor mat and in addition it is very functional because you're always going to need your crafting table whenever you're doing brewing or anything. Alright folks, I think that does it for the tutorial. If you enjoyed the video and you think it deserves a rating, that would be much appreciated. Now, if you want to see more Minecraft content and tutorials, don't forget to subscribe. Also, I have to do it.